Hey everybody, Brian here with Lime Roofing. Wanted to check in and show you something here today. Uh, I know there's some of you out here who have seen this uh, or you're gonna see it and you wonder why. Uh, so what we're talking about here, we're up on a roof here in beautiful Greeley, Colorado. And I'm gonna show you some markings that are up here on this roof. Um, now when I say markings, these are man-made, uh, person-made, whatever you wanna say, um, but they're up here. So this is our roof here. Uh, we just had an insurance adjuster out. Uh, from the homeowners insurance company, but what I'm talking about you see it here in yellow and over there What are these markings? Um, maybe you are in a neighborhood. You've seen these on your neighbor's houses um, Maybe you see them on your house, whatever and you're wondering why they're up there. Well, what these are these are chalk marks And when I say chalk, I mean yes like sidewalk chalk the kids use it's exactly what it is what this is these are markings for the insurance company, for the insurance adjuster, so that they can see what damage is on this roof. So what I mean by this, I'm gonna give you an overview here. This is the front, we call it the elevation of the house. You can see out there is a street. But what we've got here, this roof was called in for damage from a hail and wind storm to the insurance company. So what the insurance company does is they send out what's called an insurance adjuster, it's just a person who comes out, who documents the damage, takes pictures, and submits the claim to the insurance company. So what we've got here, this section is 10 feet by 10 feet. We call that a square. And what they've done, they measure off one of those sections on each portion of the roof. So there you can see another one. There you see another one. And then here on the back, we also see another one. So what they want, they want four different sections of the roof. One, two, three, and four that all face different directions. So that's north, that's south, that's west, and that's east. So what they want, they want these sections, these squares, we call them test squares, to be measured out so that they can show how much damage is in each section. So what we've done on this front portion here, and you see there it's written front, 10 plus, it's plus hits. So what do we mean by hits? So what they've done in this 10 foot section, all these yellow circles you see here, this is hail damage. This is where the hail hit the shingle. That's why we call it a hail hit and damaged it, it bruised the shingle. It's a fairly good one there, you can see. But what they've done is they've showed we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So what that's showing us is there's 13 hail hits in that 10 foot by 10 foot section. So in insurance terms, what they're looking for, most insurance companies, they want at least eight to 10 hail hits in one of these 10 foot sections to replace this whole slope or elevation. So if we go over here to our other side, um, this one's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna come back to this one on you. Uh, this is our right elevation there. And I'll show you why I'm gonna come back to that in a second. But back here, we've got our vents too. Um, all of our vents here, you see these are our box vents, turtle vents. They're on the back side of the roof. That's the front. And they're on the back side so you can't see them from the street. That's the only reason. But one of the things that I wanna show you here is the other way that we can find hail damage on metal vents sometimes. And this is a really good example. But you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six vents here. But what you can see, the adjuster ran chalk up and down here and these circles right here where the chalk missed, those are all hail hits. So that shows us that we've got damage here on the metal vents. Here you can see where they did it on the back side. Here again, this is a cap to something, not the furnace because that's the furnace cap, probably the water heater. But anyways, you can see there, there's a hail hit. Um, <laughs> This one here, this is our furnace cap. Thinnest piece of metal on the roof right there. Um, there's no reason to even circle any of that. Got some bird droppings, a lot of other stuff, nothing to see there. So this one, 
This is gonna be our back elevation. This is our back test square. Again, we call it a square because it's 10 feet by 10 feet. Now on this one, we're showing nine hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what the adjuster did, it wrote back nine hail hits per square. That's what we got there. So we're gonna go over here to the right side. This one's steep too. I don't wanna be climbing on that. This was our worst slope. This was really bad. Uh, they're showing 12 <laughs> hits. Uh, there was more than 12 on this one. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The adjuster was standing right here. Uh, this section's really steep and uh, he didn't wanna fall off. So he circled 12. That was all he needed right there in that little section so that he could do this and show that our left elevation right there, 12 hits per square. Now, I'm gonna take you back over to this right test square. You guys probably remember this one because we looked at it already. So I told you, you need at least eight to 10 hail hits in one of these squares to justify replacement. One, two, three, and four. And that one down there is almost out of the square. Probably should have started it lower. But here we go, right. Four hail hits per square. So why would they have all these things up here like that? And why would we have a square here with only four hits in it if I told you you need at least eight to 10? Well, we've looked at the other sections of the roof, right? We looked at the front, we looked at the back. We we're just over there on the left. And if you remember, we were over our threshold for damage on all those. So we had our eight to 12 hail hits. So what that means, this roof is way over 50%. Um, I would actually even say from looking at the roofing diagram that we're at about 85% of this roof has damage on it. So when we get to that much, they're just gonna do what we call totaling out the roof. And by totaled out, it's just like a car. You know, what they're saying is the cost to repair this is so high that it just makes sense to replace the whole roof. So it's actually what they're doing there. But um, I wanted to show you guys, because we do get questions from homeowners sometimes. Why would this adjuster ride on my roof and chalk? You know, why, why sidewalk chalk even? Um, and the short answer is it comes off really easy. Should come off in the next rain, maybe even the next snow, depending on how wet it is. But there's somebody sitting in a desk somewhere. Uh, we'll say they're in Ohio, okay? Somebody is in Cleveland, Ohio. They pull up the file for this roof and they open up the pictures. Okay, all these markings, it's basically adjuster language. Um, they can open it up and they can say, oh, I'm looking at the front slope because it says front right here. We've got 10 plus hail hits. So 10 plus is telling that adjuster we've got more than enough damage, okay? More than enough here. And then each one of these circles, they actually have close-up photos of those. So that adjuster could be standing there looking at this and could say, okay, this is my overview. An overview means a out wide shot. Here's my close up. And that way that adjuster, whoops, sorry, dropped you there. That person, whoever's looking at that file, they can see the damage that the adjuster saw when they were out here. Really what we want to think about, these pictures are telling a story. Okay, they're showing the damage. And that way the insurance company has everything they need, in their opinion, to make a determination on whether or not this damage should be uh, considered for replacement. Now back to this right slope. If the whole roof looked like this, if each one of our sections had four hits or fewer, they would not replace this roof. Um, they would repair it. So this is the sort of stuff that's really important to look at. Um, and if you've ever seen these markings up here on a roof like this, you see chalk, you wonder what it is. That means an insurance adjuster was most likely there. Now, sometimes roofers uh, will do that too. So it doesn't absolutely mean it was an insurance adjuster, but it most likely does. Um, also with the sidewalk chalk, it doesn't hurt the roof, doesn't harm the asphalt, and it will usually wash off. So just wanted to show you guys what we had up here. If you have seen those markings on your roof or a neighbor's roof, that's what's going on. Just means uh, most likely an insurance adjuster was up there. Maybe a roofer, um, but probably not. So 
Uh, if you guys have any questions on this too, feel free to reach out, hit us up. And uh, remember on your next roofing project, don't hire a lemon, hire a lime.